Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am Valsa Williams and with me is Renu Kataria with the evening news. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says space tech is about to become the basis of a major revolution in the 21st century. Inaugurates headquarters of Indian National Space Promotion and Authorization Center in space in Gujarat. President Ramnath Kovin says education should not only develop intellectual capacity and skill in students, but also strengthen their moral values and character. Addresses sixth convocation of Central University of Himachal Pradesh at Dharamshala. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman says strategic disinvestment helped India move ahead on path of development by creating more opportunities for investment. Inaugurates conference on the theme Creating Wealth Through Market as an iconic event in 75 cities across the country. Country's industrial activity jumps to 7.1% in April against 1.9% in March 2022. Union Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh lauds Central Information Commission for achieving consistent decline in pendency and 70% increase in disposal of cases over last one year. BJP National President Jagat Prakash Nadda to interact with heads of missions from 13 countries under no BJP initiative tomorrow. In Kelo India Youth Games, Haryana retains lead in medals tally followed by Maharashtra and Manipur. In women's singles quarterfinal of Indonesia Masters 2022 badminton, PV Sindhu loses to Taipei's Ratchanok Intanon at Jakarta. Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated the headquarters of the Indian National Space Promotion and Authorization Center in Space at Bhopal in Ahmedabad, Gujarat today. Speaking on the occasion, the Prime Minister said, Space Tech is about to become the basis of a major revolution in the 21st century. Today, Indian National Space Promotion and Authorization Center yani in space ke headquarter ke liye sabhi deshwasiyon ko aur vishesh karke scientific community ko main bahut bahut badhai deta hu aaj kal hum dekhte hain ki social media par yuvaon ko kuch exciting ya interesting post karna hota hai to usse pehle wo alert karte hain aur alert mein messaging karte hain watch this space bharat ki space industry ke liye in space ka launch hona watch this space moment ki tarah hi hai Prime Minister Modi assured that this process of reforms in the space sector will continue uninterruptedly. He said the future of humanity is in development. He added there are two areas, space and sea, which are going to be most influential in future. The Prime Minister said in space is for space, for pace and for ace. It will give an opportunity to the youth to showcase their talent to the best minds of India. He said in space will create great opportunities for all in the government and private sector. Mr. Modi said by reforming the space sector, by freeing it from all restrictions and supporting the private industry through in space, the country is starting a campaign to make it a winner. He said it is our endeavor to create a maximum ease of doing business environment for the private sector so that it helps the people equally in the ease of living. हमें ग्लोबल स्पेस इंडस्ट्री में अपना शेयर बढ़ाना होगा और इसमें हमारे प्राइवेट सेक्टर की बड़ी भूमिका है मैं आने वाले समय में स्पेस टूरिज्म और स्पेस डिप्लोमेसी के क्षेत्र में भी भारत की मजबूत भूमिका देख रहा हूं भारत की स्पेस कंपनियां ग्लोबल बने हमारे पास ग्लोबल स्पेस कंपनी हो ये पूरे देश के लिए गौरव की बात होगी साथियों हमारे देश में अनंत संभावनाएं हैं लेकिन अनंत संभावनाएं कभी भी सीमित प्रयासों से साकार नहीं हो सकती Mr. Modi mentioned that the emotional solidarity of India was seen during mission Chandrayaan. He said our space mission becomes the mission of the mind of the people of the country. 
Several MOUs, Memoranda of Understanding, were also signed between in-space and private sector companies working in the field of space-based applications and services. On this occasion, in-space was announced and established in June 2020. It is an autonomous and single-window nodal agency in the Department of Space for promotion, encouragement and regulation of space activities of both government and private entities. It will also facilitate the usage of ISRO facilities by private entities. President Ramnath Kovind graced the 6th annual convocation of the Central University of Himachal Pradesh at Dharamshala today. While addressing the convocation, the President said, education is the cornerstone of the building of any country. Therefore, education should be such that it not only develops intellectual capacity and skill in students, but also strengthens their moral values and character, he added. The President mentioned, youth have played an important role in the progress of all leading countries of the world. He also stressed that the participation of women in the field of education is an important parameter for the development of any society. Addressing the students, the President said that opportunities are available for youth like them in many fields and the youth of India have capabilities to utilize these opportunities. What is required is keeping faith in their abilities and moving forward. He said the convocation is an occasion to complete their formal education, but learning would continue throughout their life. They should be ready to learn from everyone at every step. The President said students should always remember that society has contributed in some way or the other to what they have achieved so far. He added, this is society's debt on them. The President conveyed his full confidence in the wisdom of the educated, disciplined and determined youth power of India. मेरा आप सबको सुझाव होगा कि सदैव सीखने का उत्साह बनाए रखना चाहिए आपको यह भी ध्यान रखना है कि जो उपलब्धियां आपने अभी तक प्राप्त की हैं उनमें किसी न किसी रूप में समाज का भी योगदान रहा है यह समाज का आपके ऊपर ऋण है इसे चुकाने के लिए आपको हर तरह से तैयार रहना चाहिए इसे आप कैसे चुकाते हैं कब चुकाते हैं यह मैं आप सबके विवेक पर छोड़ता हूं Speaking about implementation of the National Education Policy 2020 in the Central University of Himachal Pradesh, the President noted that the University has taken several initiatives to implement its recommendations. He expressed confidence that these initiatives would develop new skills, knowledge and abilities in the students and they would move ahead in life with the spirit of self-reliance and nation first. The President said the Central University of Himachal Pradesh has completed 12 years of its establishment. It is high time for the University's Alumni Association to become active and organize its annual or biannual get-together. He said alumni of any institution feel a special attachment for their institution. Therefore, the Alumni Association can play an important role in giving this spirit a useful form for the institution. In celebrations of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, Department of Investment and Public Asset Management, DPAM, organized a conference on the theme, Creating Wealth Through Market, as an iconic event in 75 cities across the country. All the cities were connected virtually via video conferencing. Union Minister for Finance and Corporate Affairs, Srimati Nirmala Sitaraman, inaugurated the conference virtually from Indian Institute of Science, IISC, Bengaluru. Addressing the conference, Srimati Nirmala Sitaraman said, Post-1994, plans of strategic investment opened up. Now those companies are giving better output and competing equally with FPOs. She said, with strategic disinvestment, India is moving ahead on the path of development by creating more opportunities for investment. She talked of Bharat ETF, Exchange Traded Fund, and how deepening and diversification of bond market has benefited the economy. She expressed her delight that young entrepreneurs are coming up, resulting in public-private partnerships which are helping in economic development of the country. Union Minister of State for Finance Dr. Bhagwat Kisan Rao Karad inaugurated the conference at Vigyan Bhavan by lighting of the lamp. Speaking on the occasion, Dr. Bhagwat said, This investment has become Jan Bhagidari as lots of people are participating in it to make it more effective. He said steps taken by Deepam have helped promote development of the nation as envisaged by Prime Minister Modi. This initiative of Deepam aims to educate, encourage and empower people in 75 cities across India about investments and creating wealth, as well as on the steps taken by the government for ensuring financial growth of the citizens. 
Financial experts and professionals spoke on the occasion at local venue in 75 cities. The event also featured the discussions on broad topics such as growth of Indian capital markets in the past 75 years, women as rising independent investors, financial literacy and future of Indian capital markets that is Amrit Kal. Arun Kumar Singh for AIR News, New Delhi. The country's factory output index of industrial production IIP accelerated 7.1% in April as against 1.9% in March 2022. According to the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation data released today, the growth in IIP data during April has been noted in all the sectors. The manufacturing sector recorded a growth of 6.3% in April. The mining sector rose by 7.8% and the electricity sector climbed 11.8%. IIP is an index which details out the growth of various sectors in the economy. The eight core industries comprise more than 40% of the weight of items included in IIP. These are electricity, steel, refinery products, crude oil, coal, cement, natural gas and fertilizers. Union Science and Technology Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh lauded the Central Information Commission for achieving consistent decline in pendency of RTI cases with constant rise in disposal of the RTI appeals. Addressing the 14th Special General Body Meeting of National Federation of Information Commissions of India in New Delhi today, Dr. Singh said pendency reduced from about 40,000 cases last year to around 27,000 cases, while the disposal of cases increased about 70% over the last one year. The minister added all steps will be taken to fulfill the aspirations and expectations of the people. Dr. Jitendra Singh said transparency, accountability and citizen-centric approach have become the hallmark of the governance model since the Modi government came into power in 2014. In Jammu and Kashmir, Union Minister of State for Agriculture and Farmers Welfare, Kailash Jodhri, under the Central Government's Public Outreach Program 3, visited the Indian International Trade Saffron Spice Park at Pampur in South Kashmir's Bulwama district today and inspected various departments of the processing unit. The minister in his address said the central government is ready to provide all possible help and support to the farmers. Chaudhary said the government of India, as well as the JNK government, have put maximum efforts to widen the growth of agriculture as well as horticulture sector, which will play a pivotal role to transform lives of the farming community. More than 194 crore 90 lakh COVID vaccine doses have been administered in the country so far. The Health Ministry said over 13 lakh 15,000 vaccine doses were administered yesterday. The Ministry said more than 5 crore 41 lakh vaccine doses have been administered to the children in the age group of 12 to 14 years so far. Over 3 crore 84 lakh precaution doses have been administered to the identified categories of beneficiaries including healthcare workers, frontline workers and people above 18 years of age. Hoerg Wutke, President of the European Union Chamber of Commerce in China, in an interview with Prasar Bharti Peijing correspondent, has said European companies are clearly looking for other countries who have learned to live with COVID for new projects, including India. We clearly look into Southeast Asia, we clearly look into India, we clearly look in the neighborhood in order to see where else can we establish ourselves for new projects. That doesn't mean that we take out a plant here and put it into India or into Malaysia, but new projects clearly will see some development elsewhere. I mean, we had uh, Prime Minister Modi in Berlin, and of course, business development all of a sudden took off, and our CEOs uh, went to India because they can travel to India, and Indian officials can travel to Germany. There's no such engagement on the Chinese side. So in a way, it's clearly the world is not waiting for China. Amid concerns about a large-scale withdrawal and decoupling between China and the West, Mr. Putka said that COVID-related lockdowns, especially in big cities like Shanghai, have resulted in significant downturn in business sentiments among foreign firms in China as consumption has taken a hit. You're listening to the Evening News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says... Space tech is about to become basis of major revolution in the 21st century, inaugurates headquarters of Indian National Space Promotion and Authorization Center in space in Gujarat. 
President Ram Nath Kovind says education should not only develop intellectual capacity and skill in students but also strengthen their moral values and character addresses sixth convocation of Central University of Himachal Pradesh at Dharamshala Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman says strategic disinvestment helped India move ahead on path of development by creating more opportunities for investment inaugurates conference on the theme creating wealth through market as an iconic event in 75 cities across the country country's industrial activity jumps to 7.1% in april against 1.9% in march 2022 Union Minister Dr Jitendra Singh lauds Central Information Commission for achieving consistent decline in pendency and 70% increase in disposal of cases over last one year. BJP National President Jagat Prakash Nadda to interact with heads of missions from 13 countries under No BJP initiative tomorrow. In Khelo India Youth Games Haryana retains lead in medals tally followed by Maharashtra and Manipur. In women's singles quarter final of Indonesia Masters 2022 badminton PV Sindhu loses to Taipei's Ratchanok Intanon at Jakarta. For quick news updates from the clock follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. अपने बिजनेस को बढ़ाने के लिए लीजिए आकाशवाणी का सहयोग और दीजिए उसे बुलंदियों के पंख. आपका बिजनेस लोकल है या राष्ट्रीय? आकाशवाणी देती है उपभोक्ताओं तक पहुंचने का हर विकल्प और अब तो आप घर दफ्तर या दुकान पर बैठे बैठे कर सकते हैं आकाशवाणी के किसी भी केंद्र के लिए विज्ञापनों की बुकिंग आकाशवाणी के विभिन्न चैनलों पर विज्ञापन देना सुलभ और सस्ता बुकिंग है तो संपर्क करें आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो आरोप कंपटीशन के अगर आप कर रहे हैं तैयारी तो उनके लिए ऑल इंडिया रेडियो पर हम लाए हैं अभ्यास एक ऐसा कार्यक्रम जिसमें आप पूछेंगे सवाल व्हाट्सएप नंबर 9289094044 पर या फिर ईमेल करेंगे अभ्यास डॉट ए आई आर न्यूज एट जी मेल डॉट कॉम आरोप और हमारे विशेषज्ञ देंगे इसका जवाब आपका अभ्यास हमारा प्रयास जन जन ने निर्णय लेकर भारत की सूरत बदली है कदम कदम पे जनता मोदी जी के साथ चली है आज साल में हमने संभव को संभव कर डाला है जब के सूरज का देखो पश्चिम में भी उजाला है गई अब दिन आएगा भी तो ये बस भोर है Welcome back to the evening news. A delegation of BJP met the Election Commission of India today regarding Rajya Sabha elections in Maharashtra and Haryana. The BJP delegation comprised Union Ministers Muftar Abbas Naqvi, Gajendra Singh Shekhawat, Dr. Jitendra Singh and Arjun Ram Mekhwal. After the meeting, Union Minister Muftar Abbas Naqvi said BJP has submitted complaints in specific states as well and asked about that this election be declared null and void on the basis of broken rules of secrecy in voting meanwhile in rajasthan congress won 3 seats while bjp won 1 seat according to the results declared a short while ago all three candidates of congress randeep singh surjewala mukul vasnik and pramod tiwari have been declared winners bjp's ghansham tiwari has also won the fourth seat the polling was conducted for 16 seats in rajya sabha spanning across the states of maharashtra karnataka rajasthan and haryana polling started at 9 am this morning in six seats in maharashtra four each in rajasthan and karnataka along with two seats in haryana Heads of missions from 13 countries will participate in an interaction with BJP National President Jagat Prakash Nadda tomorrow evening in New Delhi. This interaction is a part of the series of program No BJP Initiative launched by the party's national president. This is the fourth event of this series. The BJP president has interacted with 34 mission heads so far. During this event, Mr. Nadda will elaborate about the history, struggles, successes, ideology, and contribution of the BJP in nation building. 
The Competition Commission of India, CCI, will organize a national conference on competition law tomorrow in New Delhi as part of the Ministry of Corporate Affairs Iconic Week celebrations under Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. Union Minister of State for Corporate Affairs, Rao Indrajit Singh, will deliver the inaugural address as the chief guest. During the conference, Mr. Singh will release a film on the journey of CCI advocacy booklets in regional languages and felicitate winners of the essay and quiz competitions. The northeastern region, because of its geographical location, difficult terrain, high rainfall, vast hilly region, large forest areas and large number of ethnic groups, is not a very homogeneous territory for easily providing normal health care services round the clock to all the people of the region. Despite all the hindrances, the central government is doing its best in providing health professionals, equipment, training, etc. wherever necessary to improve the standard of health care services in the region. Dr. Ashok Roy, Project Director of Regional Resource Center for Northeastern States, opines that the central government has developed a system of health care that provides medical facilities in no time in the region. Many, many things happened during the last few years. Across the any state, there are 16 medical colleges has been established and many are in pipeline. To equip the health services with quality human resources with enhanced annual intake. There is a remarkable change in availability of adequate quality not staff and other parameters. And also, serving the community health care, it has not been limited to the developer structure and engaging more doctors and nurses alone. A relief to the people also came with the launch of free diagnostic services initiative with free laboratory tests, CT scan and X-ray services. The dream of free dialysis service came to with the launch of PMNDP or Pradhan Mantri National Dialysis Program and since then nearly 2 lakhs free hemodialysis sessions have been availed by patients in 59 districts of the any region. Both the centre and the state governments of the northeast region are doing their best to make Tripura the hub of bamboo-based sustainable micro, small and medium industries in the country by mobilising the local, natural and human resources. Bamboo and cane is one of the most important crafts of Tripura. The crafts are spread all over the state with concentration in the subdivisions of Kela Seher, Dharmanagar, Khowai, Sadar, Suamura and Bellonia, besides Agartala town. A report. After 90 years, the bamboo has legally ceased to be a tree, with the government amending the Indian Forest Act and axing the bamboo, taxonomically a grass, from a list of plants that also includes palms, scums, brushwood and canes. In doing so, the government intended to promote cultivation of bamboo in non-forest areas to achieve the twin objectives of increasing the income of farmers and also increasing the green cover of the country. A bamboo farmer of Tripura described how he availed facilities from the government schemes to expand his cultivation. We are a farmer, we have a bamboo plantation, we have a lot of benefit from it. We go from Delhi, we go from Haryana, we go from Punjab, and we go from the outside. Our friends are working in the whole year. Modi Ji has said that the bamboo is happening in the news, everything is happening for this work. We have done this work. First, we have done 50,000. Now, it has been done in the last few years. The people are making a bottle, वो पानी सर बना रहा है उन लोगों को हमारा इधर से बांबू भी दे देता हूँ This unique initiative by Modi government would not only widen and enrich traditional livelihood patterns but also forge linkages between the organized and unorganized sectors With Nishat Aziz this is Anuja Kumar for AIR News Delhi the News Services Division of All India Radio will bring the seventh episode of our special series Jammu Kashmir Ek Nai Subha at 9.30 p.m. today. This episode is titled Kudrat Ki Sehrga and will focus on the tourism sector in Jammu and Kashmir. This special program can be heard tonight on FM Gold Channel and additional frequencies from 9.30 p.m. onwards. This program will also be available on our website newsonair.gov.in and on our YouTube channel News on AIR Official. The National Human Rights Commission has taken a sua moto cognizance of a media report that a top Indian women cyclist has accused the national sprint team chief coach of inappropriate behavior during a camp in Slovenia.
The Commission has issued a notice to the Secretary of Union Youth Affairs and Sports Ministry and the Director General of Sports Authority of India calling for a detailed report in the matter. Issuing the notices, the Commission has observed that the government has been sincerely focusing on optimum participation of women in every field including sports, art and cultural activities. In Rajasthan, three people were killed and two injured in a collision between a car and a tempo near Hariyasar village in Sadar Shahar of Churu district today. According to the police, the disease were traveling in a tempo. The injured had been admitted to Sadar Shahar hospital. In the Union Territory of Ladakh, two Union Ministers will be participating in the 8th International Day of Yoga on the 21st of this month. Law and Justice Minister Kiran Rijiju will participate in Yoga Day at Pangong So in Leh and the Minister of State for Home Affairs, Ajay Kumar Mishra in Kargil. The main event of the International Day of Yoga will be held at Mysuru in Karnataka and it will be led by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. In the Kelo India Youth Games, Haryana has retained the top position in the medals tally with 33 gold, 27 silver and 36 bronze medals. Haryana has so far grabbed 96 medals. Maharashtra is at second position with 85 medals including 32 gold, 28 silver and 25 bronze medals. Manipur also retained third place with 13 gold, 3 silver and 2 bronze medals. Domestic equity markets today suffered losses of more than 1.5%, a report from the business desk. Sensex tumbled by 1,017 point finish at 54,303, while Nifty fell by 276 point to end at 16,202. In the foreign exchange market, the rupee weakened by 8 pairs against the US dollar. The rupee closed at 77 rupees and 84 pairs against the US currency. Gold was trading at 50,630 rupees per 10 grams. Silver prices also lost 990 rupees to 60,390 rupees per kilogram. And in intraday trade, Brent crude was trading at around 124 dollars and 10 cents for barrel. Arjun Chaudhary for AIR News. The National Security Advisor Ajit Duval today visited Rashtriya Raksha University, RRU, at Lavad near Gandhinagar in Gujarat. He, along with the Deputy National Advi Security Advisors Rajinder Khanna and members of National Security Advisory Board, have assessed the academic and research setup at the university. Mr. Duval also attended detailed briefings of the Information Technology Labs on Geo-Intelligence Systems, OSINT, AI, etc. He was also briefed about the various programs run by the university in the domain of police administration, defense and strategic studies, maritime and coastal security, IT and AI, criminology and behavioral sciences, and international relations and strategic languages. According to official sources, he shared extensive feedback while congratulating the university for its success and achievements in a short span. Mr. Duval emphasized that the university should adopt an empirical research model and develop a solutions-oriented approach to map and understand the nation's most pressing security challenges. Now a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow. National Capital Delhi will have a partly cloudy sky with possibility of development of thunder and lightning. Temperature will hover between 32 and 42 degrees Celsius. Mumbai will have rain or thunder showers would occur towards afternoon or evening. Temperature will hover between 26 and 34 degrees Celsius. Now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says space tech is about to become the basis of a major revolution in the 21st century. Inaugurates headquarters of Indian National Space Promotion and Authorization Center in Space in Gujarat. President Ramnath Kovind says education should not only develop intellectual capacity and skill in students, but also strengthen their moral values and character, addresses sixth convocation of Central University of Himachal Pradesh at Dharamshala. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman says strategic disinvestment helped India move ahead on path of development by creating more opportunities for investment, inaugurates conference on the theme, creating wealth through market as an iconic event in 75 cities across the country. Country's industrial activity jumps to 7.1% in April against 1.9% in March 2022. Union Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh Lord, Central Information Commission for Achieving Consistent Decline in Pendency and 70% Increase in Disposal of Cases over last one year. BJP National President Jagat Prakash Nadda to interact with heads of missions from 13 countries under no BJP initiative tomorrow. And with that, we end the evening news. Good night. 
गरीबों का परिवार भारत सरकार देश के 9 करोड़ 17 लाख घरों को मिला गैस कनेक्शन 2 करोड़ 60 लाख घरों को मिले बिजली कनेक्शन 9 करोड़ 50 लाख से अधिक घरों तक पहुंचा नल से जल दुख दर्द को बहुत निकट से अनुभव किया एक परिवार के सदस्य के रूप में काम कर रहा है आठ साल सेवा सुशासन गरीब